Welcome to the BSG Podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet. You think it's just going to be barbecue sauce? Because if you actually read those books, it's just gobbledygook. I really think clothes should be mandatory. Um, speaking of Star Wars, trailer reaction video. time to talk about the last of us that's that was nice um (laughs) episode six kin was the name of the episode not to be confused with kith and kin uh in this episode joel and ellie reach tommy in jackson wyoming who then gives Joel a heading as to where the fireflies might be in Eastern Colorado University. Go Bighorns. And uh, that's where they end up at the end of the episode, which we'll, you know, we'll get into spoilers. But thoughts, spoiler free thoughts on but I this episode. I left this thinking that I'm not saying, it, you know, it wasn't the best episode. Oof. But I think it was my favorite episode. No, but it, I think it was my favorite episode. And I'm saying, like, it may actually be the best episode in my mind, but it definitely was my favorite episode of this series. Mm. Um, I didn't read, I honestly, I didn't watch last night because we were visiting some people. And so I didn't watch it till today. And so, like, it was also weird to watch it in the daytime. Yeah. And to not be like, I'm always a little tired when I watch it, which just kind of like takes away, like, probably doesn't take away, but just your brain reacts differently at noon having just, you know, consumed coffee in the last couple hours. And uh, it felt to me like, and not that there weren't storylines in all the other episodes, this felt to me almost like a, a, like a chapter in a book, like a, like a Cormac, Mar- uh, yeah, Cormac McCarthy book mm-hmm. where there's that beginning part of what we, we know he's doing. We know Joel's looking for his brother. And there's that big, like, ooh, what's his brother up to? And he's worried about his brother. And then we find out about his brother. Mm -hmm. And then a decision is also made. I don't want to spoil anything. A decision is also made in the last act of the show. And then, ooh, cliffhanger. And I really thought the way that it was pieced together was, like, really well done. And then the other thing I'll say about this episode, it was just beautiful to watch. Just cinematography out the wazoo i mean you got that big sky country i know it's not montana but you know it's just all the scenes with the sky and the sunset and just as someone who's like literally considered almost moved to that part of the country and mostly because of that because you're just so away from everything i was like (laughs) wow this is this is literally like your ad for that part of the country except that this is end times but if it wasn't end times just the like that one scene where they're on the horse and it's just the sunset Mm -hmm. and it's just like it was just absolutely beautiful the show i mean you talked about very early on and i'm definitely on that boat now like as much as i like secession and as much as we like mandalorian i mean it's gonna be tough for any other show to to do things because they do they're starting not starting to but they know how to cover all their bases that for anyone that watches the show that may be trying to nitpick and there's not too many nitpickers i know there are some because 10 miles outside of boston yeah yeah (laughs) but uh you know that is what it is but on the fact that it's not a hundred percent rating is confusing to me i just i don't know what you could actually dislike about this show i mean the 10 miles outside of boston that's whatever but i think also the other thing when people say that like you go 10 miles outside of LA, like actually 10 miles outside of LA, it is like desert depending on which direction you go. So it there are things like that where depending on which direction you go outside of a city can look different. You know, Boston's not a major metropolitan city. It's a city that is well, very populous the, within its thing. But I think the gripe there with 10, 10 miles outside of Boston was it turned into like the Rocky Mountains. And it's yeah, not, that's true. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, the and Appalachian then, maybe begins there. I don't really know on that. 
that's more yeah. like Vermont, New Hampshire, but yeah, beautiful area though. That and just uh, th- there's been a few things. It's not perfect, but it is pretty damn close. Yeah. And that's my point though. It's like how many shows are actually perfect though? I mean, Seinfeld is my favorite show of all time and it's not perfect. Right. So uh, this episode is there's not a whole lot of action. It is emotionally action packed though. Yes. From really start to finish there's some pretty significant there's some pretty significant changes from game to movie. Uh, it's interesting, and I've mentioned this before, but it's interesting that you mentioned Cormac, McC- Cormac McCarthy uh, because the road is a heavy influence on this game. I mean, you can see the DNA oh, yeah. through it <laughs> yeah. All, yeah. all over it. But <clears throat> I think that this is really without getting too deep into spoilers i feel like this is the first episode where there are stakes that make the end goal seem unattainable yes and i had people message me like cuz they know that i'm like you know i'm i'm the last of us guy right and I had people message me like, oh my God. And I, <laughs> I said, well, do you want me to tell you what happens? No, you monster. <laughs> that sort of thing. But yeah, it is a, it is a cliffhanger. And then what's really fun about that is that what they previewed in the next on episode is going to extend that cliffhanger out you know, another two weeks basically before there's right, cause it's just a resolution Ellie episode. Right. I mean, right. that's what we're looking at. Yeah. It, it functions as the, so when the game came out 2013, you get this whole game. And then I don't remember how much longer it was later, but you got this standalone downloadable content mission or like section to play through called left behind and it kind of intersplices what happens at the end of this episode of tv with the story of how ellie kind of came to her condition if you will and so it kind of shows all that and i think it plays a little bit on one of the more powerful moments of this this episode I want to give a special shout out to one of the things that they added, which was the Native American couple at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. That was really funny. Like actually like a little bit of levity for the show that was just like, yeah. you guys are idiots. Sort of deal. <laughs> and I really like that. It, it was fun. That's not something that you come across when you're playing, but like the whole concept of like the river of death and all this, you know, um, <clears throat> It was just kind of, it was funny. And that actor has been, he was in, he was in Maverick. I don't know his name off the top of my head, but he's he in like, that guy. Yeah. He's in a lot of things. Yeah. Seen he's him in many times. a lot of times where it's a movie that needs some level of native American representation in it. He's that guy. It, like you said, he's a, that guy. And I remember him vividly playing the role of a native American chief in the Mel Gibson movie Maverick, which is like yeah. one of my, it's like an underweight underrated, like borderline action comedy Western from back in the day. It's got like Jodie Foster's in it and James Gardner who plays the original Maverick from the TV show and everything, but that's neither here nor there. So that was a fun little scene. And then <clears throat> just kind of as they're going through and the way that she is, Ellie is very slowly disarming him from like bringing his walls down to make her feel 
or rather allow her in a little bit. And I think that that was, I think that this episode was in many ways, the most engaging episode of the season, because even though there wasn't a great deal of physical action, the amount of emotional action that takes place <laughs> is real. It's heavy and it's, there's a lot from start to finish when he meets Tommy and their interactions. And then the interactions that take place with Joel and Ellie. And then, you know, obviously the, the end of the episode. So I think we should go ahead and get into spoilers. But before we get into a spoilers, we got to pay some bills Yes, we do. This week, our episode is brought to you by any generic windshield wipers. Any generic windshield wipers. You just want to get that rain off. You want to make sure that when you put your windshield fluid up on your windows, it just clears it off. Uh, I personally, and we love a personal antidote when it comes to it, had a big old bird crap on my window the other day because I have to park in a tree, and I won't get into that story. Maybe a little uh, workplace story for a later time. Uh this started happening about six weeks ago where I had to change my parking space, but big old bird crap. And I don't mess around. I get the good stuff when it comes to the washer fluid. I don't know what they put on my windshield wiper blades at the automotive place. I just told them to put them on. I'm assuming it's generic wiper blades. Scoop that bird crap right off. I could see clearly going home. So generic wiper blades. Find them anywhere. Wiper blades are sold and installed. Always ask them to install it because it's a bitch. Otherwise, it truly is. Uh, so <laughs> generic wiper blades. Type in BXG podcast at genericwiperblades.com for 20% off. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> or, you know, Blitzkrieg over London. Yes. Um, spoilers. <laughs> There are a lot of moments in this episode, so I kind of want to break them down. Excuse me. I kind of want to break them down in chronological order. First of those is when Joel and Ellie cross the river of death and they are surrounded by a group of people. And there's a dog who can sniff out infections. And Joel is basically paralyzed with fear over what's going to happen when the dog approaches Ellie. So what was your, I guess, what was your like level of anxiety as? I, <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. I didn't have a ton of anxiety. I actually said out loud to Janie. That dog wouldn't rip apart a chew toy. Just looking at that dog. Uh, and But I also just, I felt like, I really did feel like with her being able to have like immunity to this, mm -hmm. that she wouldn't get sniffed out. I didn't realize it would end up with the cue of her petting the dog or whatever, but I could understand his fear. Yeah. We're watching this from the outside. If you're in it, you don't know. But we're mm -hmm. watching this from that. It's also a thing where, like, I, you know, that's not sound like super weird, but it's like they're going to kill her if, if she is, you know, if the dog freaks out. And yeah. if we know she, you know, we know she's not actually going to get killed, whether you play the game or not. That would be a, that'd be an inopportune time to just say we're done with her in this. Now, I'm not saying that things like that don't happen in this, in this game, but they are the two main characters. Uh, so I'd be pretty shocked if it happened this early in the first season. I'm not saying that something doesn't happen to the one or, you know, one of them before the season even ends. Uh, but I do feel like that would have been a little, a little uh, yeah, a little much early. Uh, but I will say this, having no idea what happens in like the second version of the, the uh, part two of this game. I'm, I wouldn't be shocked if Joel dies, like, if, you know, at some point. 
I really would be shocked. Am I even basing off this episode? I would be more shocked if she dies before he does in this show. Um, and I have no, like I said, I have no idea. I don't look at anything. I don't read anything. So I definitely didn't have too much anxiety over it. Um, I did have a little, the only thing I really thought about is that's where my brain did that move where I'm like, if somebody's going to die before the season ends, it's going to be Joel. I mm. definitely thought that to myself where I don't think we get rid of Ellie. I really, I, and, but I could be hundred percent raw in this, you know, the last of us season one ends with her die. And then Joel is just like in total, like pissed off mode even more. And that's what season two is or part two of the game. We will get to Joel in a little bit. Well, actually, we'll we'll stick with Joel. Eric. He meets Tommy, and initially, and then this is in this is in Jackson, Wyoming, and they have these sort of gated. It's like a gated um, community. There's guards on the gates, but inside the gates is very much. More so than even what Bill and Frank had a layer of normalcy not seen in the rest of the world. There's uh, restaurants, there's stables, there's farming. <laughs> it's a commune, basically. Tommy gets a little bit prickly when, when it's referred to as communism. And that's probably a callback to him having been like a veteran. <laughs> but as his partner, uh, his wife, who we learn in the course of this is his wife is um, kind of lets on that. Well, it is a commune. So, and we all do our own share and we get everything. So technically that is kind of what it is, but that's right. just kind of a, <clears throat> that's not really an important point per se, but we find out that basically Joel feels as though he needs Tommy's help. And we're not necessarily sure why at first, but we see Joel kind of say, I need your help to get her to the fireflies to finish this trip the rest of the way. And Tommy is reluctant and then eventually discloses that he and his wife are expecting a child. And as this is happening, his wife is kind of like tending to Ellie, getting her kind of cleaned up, whatever. And Ellie learns through a memorial in Tommy's house that Joel had a daughter, had a daughter named Sarah that passed away at the beginning of the outbreak, as we know and saw. And so this is sort of <clears throat> this moment for her. And then eventually... Joel breaks down to Tommy and, you know, kind of spills it. I'm too old. I'm too slow. I can't hear. I need you to take her because if I do, she's going to get killed. And it's kind of in that moment of just vulnerability that I think a really, really great performance occurs from Pedro Pascal. And oh, yeah. I know that a lot of people, like I saw a lot of headlines today about like how Joel is like the anti-toxic male and whatever. And I think that boiling it down to that is maybe a bit reductive for this role, but you know, he talks about, <clears throat> I failed, I failed over and over and over again. I failed to protect Sarah. I failed to protect Tess. I failed to, you know, I failed to be there for, for bill. And I know that, if I go any further with her, I'm going to fail her too. And so just talk to me a little bit about, <clears throat> excuse me, about your, you know, thoughts on that particular scene with, with Joel and Tommy in the, I don't know if that was like a, some type of a repair shop or like a blacksmith's or something like that, that, um, you know, that, that he kind of breaks down and tells Tommy. I mean, you know, when when you go for the Emmy, they they just pick a scene. 
and whatever that's how it works it's not like it's all it's not your collective work of a show which has always bugged me honestly yeah. actually about the emmy it should be a collective work right uh it shouldn't be just a scene but anyhow this is the scene that they submit for the emmy for pedro pascal i think as of now as of now right as of as of what i've seen as of what i've seen um <clears throat> and what i know about this show because he kills it i mean it's it's totally like this thing where you're almost like because you want them together, but he sells it so well. You're like, well, do we really want that? You know, it, he does mm-hmm. do a really good job of that. And it is interesting to see him as vulnerable. And we start to see, you know, Ellie break him down, obviously, like you said, in, in like a best possible way. She's not breaking him down in a bad way or anything like that. And I think, like you said, I think that is reductive to say that he's like this, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call him. I just think that is reductive. I think this is the guy who's done a lot of bad things. Yeah. And and like he said, he's failed and he's been through some shit. And I think it's just one of those things where like there's there are points where you just have to come to a terms where like I don't think I can do this. It's not it's not being like toxic like untoxic masculinity. It's literally I just actually can't do this anymore because I don't I, like things are actually wrong with me that I'm putting, I, I'm compromising her situation. Like, mm-hmm. you know, whether, you know, we know he cares about her, but you know, in that aspect of like, whether he just wants to get the job done or not, he talks about just being a worker and getting the job done in this episode. Mm-hmm. I thought was really cool being a contractor. And I thought that was an awesome, like back and forth between Andy and Ellie. It, it was just so compelling. And you could tell that like, I, for me, I could tell that he that's where you really tell that he cares so much about Ellie where he's right. willing to like quit this because he's like I he's willing to reveal that I can't do certain things and mm-hmm. he's been so unwilling to do that so far he's usually been so tough about things and you know he admits just like I couldn't do it I just freeze now yeah and this is a guy and then he gets his mojo back here a little bit later on in the episode but well, let's pause yeah. before we get into that. Yeah, um, right, right. I didn't want to get into that, but I think that, like you said, this is like that almost like Emmy moment, and he reveals to Tommy that Ellie is immune, and like the importance of getting her to the Fireflies, and some of the other things, you know, he talks about his fear and how the fear just overcomes him to the point where it's physically manifesting. But I think the other side of that coin is the scene in the bedroom with where Ellie kind of puts it all out there to him Mm -hmm. is also that same moment for Bella Ramsey Mm -hmm. for now. And it is that that's a very famous scene in the game where he says, you know, basically Tommy's going to get you there. I can't do it. He knows the area better than I am. He's younger than me. He's, he's more capable of this and that. And she says, I'm afraid. And not being with you is only going to make me more afraid. And it's really like, it's really powerful shit. It's great. Oh, you know, it's awesome. and, and she says, I know about your daughter. And he says, you have no, you know, you have no idea what loss is. And that's him speaking kind of out of turn because he doesn't know what her situation is. And we're going to find a lot, find out a little bit more about that in the next episode, but it's just really like, it's stunningly powerful on both ends of the spectrum from, from Pedro Pascal and from Bella Ramsey the emotion that's conveyed. And I felt like very little of that was unchanged or I'm sorry, very little of it was changed. It was mostly unchanged from the game. And it was, it's just one of those moments that like, it's funny because I think a lot of people look at video games and they think about, you know, Mario. Yeah. Right. Or, Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto, and it's just like, oh, these are entertaining, but they're ultimately just kind of mindless, whatever. But then when you actually get to experience some of the stories told by games like The Last of Us, God of War, Uncharted, um, 
some of these uh, there's others final fantasy different final fantasy stories and whatever like the stories are really good <laughs> like really good and the fact that they've they've taken this game and the narrative from this game and minus a few changes here in Bill's town in that episode being the largest departure for the most part, leaving it generally unchanged, I think goes to show you that games are a medium that are, I think in terms of like creativity and the way that they can move people and just as pieces of art are wildly underappreciated. Sure. Because, you know, as, as you're playing, a game is going to give the player a level of agency and choice that no novel or movie or TV series or whatever ever could. And so to, to be able to craft that while also crafting this really beautiful story is, I think it's, I think it's incredible. It's one of the reasons why this game is one of my favorite games is because I think it transcends it's just a pure p you know not to not to paraphrase our friend dj outro too much but it's just a pure piece of artwork you know and i think that it's moments like these in the game that translate so well to the screen that really convey that like this is this is art in every sense of the word and it's art in the way that the actors portray it's art in the way that it's shot. It's just, it's, it's just high level, just creativity and artistry that, and that's why I think, and, and I haven't seen secession, so I can't, I can't speak to that, but like, we love the Mandalorian or some of these other shows that we've talked about over time that are so good, but I just feel <clears> like <throat> this is, this is just in the same way that the game that originally came out 10 years ago is so, still a cut above of anything that's out there. Mm -hmm. I just feel the same way about the show, you know? And um, I think it's, it's a collection of these moments and these emotions and how they're conveyed and how they're portrayed that really pushes forward. This game pushed forward the medium of games. And I have a sense that this show can do the same for television to a degree because like when we think about shows like this in this genre it's like okay the walking dead the walking dead is nothing compared to six episodes of this you know what i mean i will say this is what i'll say and like not to like complete i i watched the walking dead for a while it was compelling television but i will say like the emotion wasn't there it was a different right. kind of it was made to entertain. Right. And I think there is a place for that. I do wonder, The Walking Dead should not have been like nominated for best series, right? But it wasn't also trying to do that. Sure. And I don't think it would have worked that way because if you've read those graphic novels, they're awesome. They are like really cool. And like, I mean, they're they're pretty good for what they are, for what yeah. they're trying to do in that genre. That's a very tough genre. The thing is with that is that is zombie drama. This is- Human this drama. Is the thing where- human drama that's yeah. the difference is like that's what makes this so much different is that the zombies are yeah you know, they're not zombies but you know what infected. i mean like infected are... they actually banned that word from set oh that's we're not, not okay. allowed to say zombie on set it's Good. they're infected it's, because it's like it's actually not the show it right. really isn't i mean it's cool when you see them and they're like creepy looking and if you pause on them it freaks me out a little bit but and I saw an article where it was like, how come they're just not eating these guys? Uh, put them on like a little pizza. It was like a funny article or yeah, something, sure. but one of those things. But that's really cool. We're like, it is just humanity. It's more than that. And, and, and The Walking Dead is the opposite. And I also think there's the idea of like The Walking Dead just went on for too long for different reasons yeah. and things like that. So I don't want to take well, away from like that because art... I did like that show for like five seasons and then it just went completely off the yeah. rails. I know so. that the that the graphics lost quality as well because there was yeah. I saw a yeah. panel online at one point where it looked like Rick saving Rick from Rick. And yeah. that's like oh, how lazy bad. the art got. 
You it know? got so bad. It got so bad. Yeah, there was like a deer that it was. It was bad. It got really, really. Lazy. I don't. I, this, this, and this is tangential, obviously, but like, I don't really like the art style in in the Walking Dead comics. It just seems it's like so blocky to me. You know. I mean, I don't necessarily like the the art style that much. I mean, I will be. There are a few graphic novelist art styles that I actually like. Uh, cause I think a lot of times they try to be too, yeah, too right. much. Right. And it's like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of 1966 Spider-Man. Yeah. Sure. Like I like that art style. Well, it's it like, pops yeah, and everything. And, so it's, you know, and, and we're not talking about Frank that, Miller but I was just and, saying like, yeah. Yeah. Right. And I like things like that, but, um, but on this show, it's like that humanity is so important yeah, and very cool. And the fact that they decide to keep with that and, and there was a, so I was going to play this game. I thought about it because I like um, oh, during my spring break, I thought about playing this game, uh, which comes up in March or April. I'm sorry, in April. And I, I'm glad I because I, I think I am going to do it then because mm-hmm. I don't want to know anything. Now, the question I had for you before I go on is. Does knowing what's going to happen take away anything for you or is it like the, the last dance? Where that's my, you know, Jordan is my favorite athlete of all time. And I watched all those things. And it absolutely took nothing away from it. If anything, it almost enhanced my my memory of those things to a degree of like, oh, this is why I cared so much about this particular thing. Because I can imagine being someone that, you know, wasn't alive when the, the Jordan Bulls existed and watching that and be like, well, Jordan was a total asshole or a total badass, however you want to look at yeah, it. Yeah, sure. And... For me, I just looked at those things where like this was all competitiveness and I didn't care and I'd love this. This is my favorite, you know, this is my favorite athlete ever. And I thought about this when I finished watching this show today with you. I was like, does knowing what happened take away from this or does it just kind of get you more pumped about like, oh, this is why I care so much about this game. And now people can see it who didn't necessarily play it like like me. I think I'm a guy like a perfect example. Yeah. I think that part of it is that is like everybody knows i'm a you know i uh, one of my biggest hobbies is playing video games i don't consider myself a gamer as they say like i'm not like when i think of like gamer bros it's like call of duty Fortnite, and all that shit like i play games that are have a little bit more depth than that and not always i mean sometimes i like dumb shit too you know but I think that this in particular is something that I've been a champion for, for so long to the point that it's like irritating to other people. I'm, I'm the Trojan horse meme where it's like me at the party and the Trojan horse is just like me being at a party. And then it's the last of us. (laughs) And it's because when this game came out, everybody loved it. And then as, as everything that is like dominant in the, in the zeitgeist of whatever, it becomes fun to clown on it. And so I think that that really happened, especially around the time of the second game where about a month, month and a half before the game, the second game came out major plot points leaked online. It was just complete bullshit. I was able to avoid them because I don't, I'm not like on Twitter all the time or whatever, but it became popular to kind of clown on the last of us and clown on naughty dog. And my stance on that was, you know, why would you take something so close to perfect and try to make, make a mockery of it. And so now like, getting outside of the generally toxic landscape of gamer fandom and having this being appreciated by a much wider audience is just, I don't want to say I feel vindicated or validated, but it's like, it's kind of like when you're the first person to listen to a band and then they get popular it's like a lot of people feel like, Ugh, yeah, you don't right. know. but then there are some people who are like, Oh no, they've been this shit forever and go back and listen to their old stuff. 
that sort of thing. And that's kind of, kind of how I feel is like, this has been kicking around for 10 years and it's been amazing the whole time. It's a PS3 game. That's better than anything that's come since it's better than any PS. The best game on PS4 is this remastered. The best game on PS5 is this reimagined. You know what I mean? And, and it's one of these things where it's just like, that might not be true. God of War Ragnarok's pretty goddamn good. But so no, it doesn't take away it doesn't take away from anything. If anything, at the end of the, at the end of each episode, I'm that guy going, "You sons of bitches, you did it." You know, and it's Rick the Sanchez, way that they, you son of bitch. Yeah, the way they the way that they pull it off every single week to make it. And I really, I really enjoy seeing like going on the next day to like Instagram to like IGN or whatever, and seeing the side-by-side comparisons and seeing like just how close, like just the attention. It's cool. It's so cool. It's just phenomenal. And I'm actually really bummed and we can kind of get into this section now. I'm really bummed that they didn't spend more time with the university. And the reason why is, and this is another thing that I think the game does a really great job of is not just showing you like, well, the world fell apart, but showing you from each individual section where you're at, just how it falls apart through these collectibles, journal diaries, notes, um, lists, correspondence, these sort of things. And one of the ways that the university does that is to show how the outbreak and then the subsequent downfall of civilization occurs through the lens of college kids and like how the, how you like sneak through the dorms and shit and like pick up different notebooks. And there's like letters and all this stuff about just how this happened at this university. <clears throat> it's really cool. And it's actually one of the best places in the games where they just, it's just chock full of like historical PlayStation Easter eggs. There's like Jack and Daxter statues and there's like an uncharted um, chibi head and all that. It's really fun. But the fact that it was just, they go, there's nobody there. And that gives you this sense of, well, shit. Now what? They're gone. Okay. There's monkeys. There's monkeys. She makes a funny joke that maybe they turned into monkeys. They're gone. What do we do now? Okay, there's this map to Salt Lake. And so it's now like, okay, well, now we have to go even further. And then you really don't even get to process that because they get attacked in the show by raiders and Joel gets stabbed by the shard of a baseball bat and it's lodged on the side. And, you know, she's able to get him up on the horse and flee after he chokes the guy out and breaks his neck, which I felt like that was like a long time coming because that's like the yeah. death in the game. And that was the mojo that I was saying. He gets his mojo back. He yeah, gets sure. Kill a guy Mom- momentarily old school style. Yeah. And then, you know, he falls off the horse and we're left with, cl- with the cliffhanger. I will say that that the way that shakes out is a big change in the game. He's fighting. <clears throat> he's like grappling with a, with one of these uh, raiders or whatever you want to call them. And they fall like over a like a railing or whatever, and a piece mm. of re- a piece of rebar just goes straight through him. And oh. so he's got to like pull himself off that and like stagger through, and he's still kind of shooting at people and stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, you're left with this cliffhanger, and that's the, that's what people were were texting me like, Joel can't die, right? And I'm like, well, do you want me to tell you? Right, don't say anything. Because I will. I mean, I will tell you what happens. But <laughs> you know, it's it is. It's it's a moment of, and she says at the end, she's like, "I can't do this without you." Yeah. And so you know, we are left. She with has to win the Emmy. I just, I, he can, but she has to. I mean, like, I really will be very disappointed if she doesn't because she's nineteen, right? I think yeah. in. It, 18 or 19. Yeah. She, she's amazing on this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's great too. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from him, but I mean, like we all love him. I mean, that's one of those things where he's so universally loved that yeah. he's one of the few people in our world that like everyone just likes. Yeah. We're just like, Oh, Pedro Pascal. 
it took him forever. It was 20 years. It was overnight success. It took 20 years. That kind of thing. Yeah. He but was on Buffy. He was on Buffy. Yeah. He's, yeah. You know what I like? What I love most about Pedro Pascal? He's always been Pedro Pascal, though. It, like, in everything. And I don't mean that he's, like, stereotypical, like, that kind of thing. It's just that like, he's always cool. Right. He's just a cool guy. Yeah. He's just a cool guy. And he looks cool. Like, he looks like a fun hang. But she has to win. I mean, I'll be, like, literally pissed. I, I, and I invest myself into all award shows, as everyone knows that listens to this. Mm-hmm. I will, I will lose my, if he loses, I'll be upset, but I'll be pissed. If, there's no way anybody's going to do better than, than she does. So, but well, it's really interesting because that was a, um, that was the casting choice that had a lot of people scratching their heads. Right. Yeah. And so she's awesome. She's absolutely crushed it. She's absolutely she's crushed ama- it. <laughs> she's amazing. That scene, like you said, we're in the room. Mm-hmm. And she's saying like about her story. I mean, it was I like I have goosebumps just thinking about it. She's so yeah. so good. It's and there's a lot of young, a lot of really good young actors and or and sure. actresses or whatever you want to say. I mean, um, but I mean the way she just you don't even think about it. You don't even think about her being young or whatever. You're just like, oh, she just knows what she's doing. She commanded so. Mm-hmm. I, th- I there's that trifecta of winning best show, best actor, and best actress. The show won't do that. You and don't think I don't it will? T- I don't want to touch no because no show shows just don't do that. I mean, Mad Men was like a powerhouse. Sopranos was a powerhouse, and I don't think I really don't think any of the shows ever did where they got all three. Uh, maybe Sopranos did. I could be wrong on that one, but Mad Men I don't think ever did because it was always like supporting actress or something with Mad Men. Uh, even though Elizabeth Moss was definitely like more of a lead, lead really. a, a yeah. lead on that, especially the later seasons. Um, I, I, this is to me the show that has the best chance in a long time. Where it loses, I and that sounds weird. I hope it loses with Pedro Pascal. I really do, because I, I think he doesn't care. Like he, he, like he won't care, and it won't affect him. But I think mm-hmm. it could really affect her career. Of like she gets this, and then she can do whatever she kind of wants going forward. And the show is amazing. I mean, I, Succession to me is the only show left that has a chance, unless there's some show that comes out this summer on like Hulu or whatever that I... is like insane. But you know, you know, I mean, yeah. we don't know. And, but I. Succession would have, for me, Succession would have to have its best season since the first season to even be in the running to take away. It'll also be nominated because it'll be good, but to even have a chance, I think it would have to be as good as the first season. And that's, you know, and I love that show. I love that show. Yeah. I don't, um, <clears throat> there's no. Uh... Well, there is air. I'm sorry, but that's a movie, right? That's a movie. That's a that's theater. Not... That's in theaters too. Yeah. That's a theater. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. if that was. I think if that was a TV show, then I actually have had a chance with like Affleck and Damon well, for yeah, eight sure. episodes. Sure, that'd be cool. Yeah, and who knows? You know what HBO has down the line later this year. This is pretty early in the year, but it's got to be. It's certainly front runner right now for a lot of awards. I'd throw in you know, director and oh yeah. Obviously I think makeup just for those clicker, you know. The clickers are so cool. Yeah. The the music, which is ripped straight from the game. Amazing. Is yeah. uh is great. I think it's I yeah, I think it's gonna have a, a great opportunity to win a win a lot. Game of Thrones three times, one twelve in one year. Yeah. Uh, does it top that? I mean, I'm not as big of a Game of Thrones person as like a lot of other people. I thought mm. Game of Thrones was good, but not great. I I, I think Game of Thrones had one great season uh, and I, a lot of three. I think the first well, three seasons way, are great. I would say the second season of Game of Thrones is my favorite season of Game of Thrones. Really, that's uh, not, mm, mm. Uh, overall one and three. Third, one and three third had the best episode, and yeah. one was like just got you going, but. It's. I would take this over Game of Thrones. Oh every, yeah, every yeah. day of the week and twice. On I don't Monday. know. The Wire is my favorite dramatic 
show. And I think that this has a very strong possibility to unseat that. However, I'm not going to say that after one season, I want to see what they're able to do in season two and, and beyond potentially. I I have a a small power rankings of the best first seasons of television ever. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's only two. It's only two. It's only two. It's OC season one, which I will live and die by that being the best season of television. First season. First season. First your first your inaugural season of television. And then Mad Men season one. Uh, and it ends with a very famous episode. I can't speak to the OC, but well, you can't, I you prefer. Can't. And I, well, I well, prefer, and, and I did watch season one of Mad Men, but I prefer season one of The Wire to it. Um, and, and I've watched season one of The Wire. Season one of The Wire is very good, but it doesn't come into my. And I remember watching season one of The OC with Ty, and he was like, "It was so funny." I mean, we were in college or whatever, so your mindset's a little different. But he he definitely really loved it too, and I was like, "This stuff." Uh, this show might. Rank, get into my power rankings. Did you do you which think which is only um, two right now? Only two right now. Do you think Ty would say uh the wire or the OC? What's your he would what's take your the guy? wire? Okay. He would take uh, the wire over I'm the OC. Gonna, no, first season, I mean. First season. Yeah. You think he takes the OC I, or the wire? You know what? I this is the thing I will absolutely say. I think if and I mean like the King's you, the King Jins, the King's y'all. The royal you, the royal. Please you. don't ever say you it again. The you will be sure replaced. You will be replaced. <laughs> I, I will replace you. Our, I'll replace you cover, with a trained monkey if you ever say that care, again. <laughs> I want to cover all our pizza box size bases. Um, it is a. I know you might shit on it, and it is. I've a never. I can't shit piece. on it. I've never seen yeah, it. Yeah. Right. It is a superb season. The rest of the OC is okay, and I—I I mean, I love it. It has a, it holds. It started. Bef- it started in my freshman year of college. It ended when I ended college. So there's that part thing. And I watched it with a certain group of people for two years. So it has a certain like appeal to me that is different than other people. You watch um, any- Outer Banks? Yeah. Do you really? <sighs> it, it feels it's like not it, like the OC. It feels it's like the like wish OC, version though. of the OC. Oh, it's just well, got that Netflix is, stink on it. So yeah. it's well, it doesn't have a, a stink on it. It has like I don't want to say a stink. It just it, it's got the Netflix. It's a little. Stink, it's a it? little. A little overcooked. But yeah, I love it. oh, that's, it's yeah, that's good, the though. Netflix it's stink. Good. You know what I say? What it is is it's a Bravo stink that isn't on Bravo. Where like it's mm. just a little overdone. But man, that show is wild. I love it. Janie is like, she's out. I think I, yeah. she, I will try to get her back in. This is a show that like, if she goes to bed before I do, I like, I just fire it up. It's so stupid. The go. OC isn't stupid in first season. It does get stupid later on. I will hundred percent agree with that, but I will take, I've said this for years. The first season of the OC is the best season of first season of television I've ever watched best first season of television i've ever watched this show might make my top three now and i haven't had a contender in a long time i want to get this it's i feel like make, we need to uh get this trademark first season yeah well this has a very ready-made you know what i mean yeah it like, does it does yeah it's, it's not a little it's bit, not yeah it's it's adapted screenplay right like OC was just word. I'm trying to find thing. an alliteration. I love it. Uh, I mean, no, did Melissa funny. watch the OC? I maybe. I don't know. I can say that we've never watched it together. It's so good. Um, I I just I honestly I fire up a couple episodes from that first season every once in a while, and Chris Mika is just. But you know, the final episode of the first season of the OC is all right. Let's uh, let me let me so stop good. you there. I'm just talking about like how good moving it has into to be. <laughs> we've got yeah, yeah, right. left behind Sorry. next week. Um, yeah, quick predictions, like real quick, like in less than a minute. Predictions, go. I have no idea. I'm excited. Okay. I feel like she gets bit again or like another time and, and before this, like, so she actually has been bit like three times 
Mm. They're like infected three times. So she heals from that first time. And we don't know about it. That's what I'm going to say. And she kills some things. Well, we'll see. I know exactly what happened, so I'm not going to confirm sure. or deny one way or the other, but it's a very emotional um it's an emotional thing. And I'm this is the only thing I'm going to say. If you didn't like episode three for a certain reason, you're not going to like this one either. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, oh my god. Let's, let's move. Oh, they're gonna cook. Yeah, they are gonna cook, just like Russ. <laughs> <laughs> 